All right. Good day to everyone. So it's a little bit rainy this past few days, and I hope everyone is safe and dry sa kanita nila mga bahay. Um, I myself is a little bit sick um, as of the moment, so um, please, you'll have to excuse me every now and then if I will be uh, sneezing or coughing or sniffing <laughs> singot ng sipon kasi uh, medyo masama po pakiramdam po ngayon. Pero uh, we'll still try to discuss operations management. Um, total, it's it's a little bit like an introduction to the subject itself. So nothing too technical as of the moment. Everything else is pretty much uh, self-explanatory. So madali lang siyang i-explain to uh, everyone for a while. I'm just going to charge my device. Oh. Alright, there we go. Um, ayan, sinisingot na ako. Uh, let's go, let's begin. Um, operations management, tulad ng sabi ko uh, last week, um, ang pag-aaralan natin for today will be based on modules 2, 3, and 4. So, hindi na tayo magkakaroon ng G cla- uh, GMIT classes. Hindi na rin tayo magkakaroon ng vid- uh, recitations natin. Instead, I'll give an activity for everyone to uh, to do. Now, um, let's proceed with the introduction to operations management. And the first thing that we need to do is understanding the operations management in the production of goods and delivery of services and its importance in the industry. So, na pag-usapan natin before that operations management, um, it is it is a uh, process. No, ito yung pinag-aaralan natin yung step by step process from step one hanggang the last step, and then we have an output. We have produce an output from doing or following steps one hanggang sa last step natin. And yun ang una natin pag-usapan for operations management. Pag-usapan natin kung Ano nga ba yung output na pwede nating ma-produce dito sa uh, uh, gagawin nating mga operations? And to tell you honestly, it is only divided into two. So, so op- sa buong mundo ng operations management, dalawang bagay lang talaga ang pinoproduce natin in each businesses. The first is a production of goods results in a tangible output. Pwede mo siyang mahawakan, pwede mo siyang maramdaman, anything that we can see or touch. It may take place in a factory, but it can occur elsewhere. So, hindi lang yung mga factory, um, factories natin nagpo-produce ng goods. Um, ibang goods na pwede pang i-produce natin is um, from farms. Like say, for example, yung ating mga vegetables, mga fruits, mga livestock, um, yung ating kusang nagagaling ating mga meat, di ba? mga seafood. And then we have restaurants as well. Pinaproduce nila yung kanilang mga food. Um, beverage products, those are tangible products. Those are production of goods. Now, there is another part. Ang counterpart naman niya is yung service. So, I, I think this is pretty much self-explanatory. It is an act. Generally implies an act of service. So, a physician's examination, pag kayo ay makukonsulta sa doktor, TV and auto repairs, lawn care, pro- projection of a film in a theater are examples of services. So, um, yung mga, yung mga serve, so yun lang naman talaga ang difference, no? yun lang ang dalawang klase ng outputs to pwede nating ma-produce when uh, doing a business or having a business. Customer service representatives, kaya sila service, well from the term itself, di ba? Um, CSRs or customer service representatives, ibig sabihin ng call center, it is a business of service. It, is, it delivers a service. It generally implies an act, no? Uh, production of goods, dito naman papasok yung ating mga, let's say for example, factories like Pure Foods, uh, Lucky Me, um, Unilever, mga ganyan. And then, um, other farms and restaurants as well are considered to produce goods. So, yun lang naman talaga ang pinaka-difference. Pero we'll have to uh, dig in deeper. Ano yung pinaka-difference nilang dalawa aside from it being tangible and it being an act or service. So, ito yung unang difference na uh, kailangan natin pag-aralan. Degree of customer contact. Gaano nga ba kalaki yung degree of customer contact ng dalawa? Uh, of course, pag-production ng goods, mababa lang ang kanyang degree of customer contact. Kasi siya, 
ang kanya ang kanyang buong operations or ang kanyang buong process is done in factories or done in uh, establishments. Pero ang mga service natin, uh, ang service providers natin, uh, ang degree of customer contact nila is malaki. Kasi uh, it, it, they have to create an interaction, they have to create a connection from the service provider to the customer. And it becomes a moment of truth na kalagay dito that will be judged by the customer. So example includes uh, health centers, hotels, public transportation, retail stores, and schools. So may mga service doon na of course, diba, since interaction siya between the service provider and customer, it is an important factor. Kasi it is, it is na, kasi nasa receiving end na eh. Both nasa receiving end ng customer. So, it is important na malaki talaga yung degree of customer contact ng service natin. Uh, next, sorry, is labor content of jobs. Services often have a higher degree of labor content. Although automated services are an exception, service providers are more a labor intensive. They harm more people. for the professional services and skills while manufacturers tend to be capital intensive. So, mapagka, makikita, makikita mo dito yung isa ulit sa mga difference ng goods and service natin. So, ang production ng goods, ang production ng goods, ang labor na kailangan dyan is hindi naman talaga ganun ka-skilled or hindi naman ganun ka-taas ang kanyang uh, credibility. They just have to follow specific sets, follow a specific Uh, in set of instructions and then process it and sometimes automated pa ang mga factories natin automated pa ang mga manufacturers natin na they use machines to operate so yun yung degree of um credibility ng labor doon sa production ng goods is not that high compared with the credibility that credibility that is needed for labor doon sa services Kasi sa services natin, you have to be knowledgeable. You have to uh, know what you re- know what you are doing. You have to uh, you have to be yun nga, you have to be knowledgeable. You have to be skillful in what you do. Um, hindi ka lang basta basta sumusunod sa isang set of instructions. You you uh, give in talent. You give in effort. You give in uh, years of your training in producing that particular service. So, yun yung pinagkaiba ng labor content ng jobs. And we here, as the future of hospitality and tourism, we belong in the service industry. So, ibig sabihin, tayo, as the labor of the service industry, we have to be developed. We have to uh, be confident the way we present ourselves, the way we uh, do things, the way we serve, di ba? It is, may kita mo naman yan sa isang tao eh, kung papaano siya ka... Uh, kabait, ga, paano siya hospitable, gaano siya um, paano niya iniisip yung kapakanan ng iba, doon pa lang makikita mo kung magaling ba talaga itong taong to when it comes to the service here in the hospitality and tourism industry. Now we we'll proceed to a uh, uniformity of inputs. We'll try to um, just uh, sweep along the discussion kasi tapos naman na yung dalawang important factors. Next, uniformity of inputs. Service operations are often subject to a high degree of variability of inputs. Bakit? Ang pinagkaiba nila, production of goods, they follow a specific set of instructions. So, ano ang mangyayari kung meron kang sinusunod na specific set of instructions, each specific set of instructions each time? Ano ang mangyayari ngayon? Ang napoproduce ninyong output is pare-parehas lamang. Walang variation whatsoever. It depends. Kung yung sinusunod mong instruction is different from the instruction of other um, products. Like say, for example, ang instructions sa century 2 na, na flakes in oil is different sa century 2 na, na afritada flavor or adobo flavor. So, there are different set of instructions in creating those two products. Pero still, you follow a specific set of instructions so pare-parehas lang yung lumalabas. However, Sa service naman, since it is an interaction para kang nagdwelve into the unknown. Hindi mo alam kung ano yung pinapasok mo. And nakadepende sa buong transaction ng pag-uusap ng waiter or ng service doon sa customer, doon nakasalalay kung maging maganda nga ba yung experience ng ating mga guest. And um, me, 
as much as possible, I try my best to tell my students na dapat pag kayo ay nagbibigay ng service, it is really um, the best kind of service that you can possibly give to uh, to the person. Lalo na na pag kayo ay mag-work in the future sa food and beverage uh, service industry. So, yun. Yun ang kailangan yung makuha, di ba? Uh, next, measurement of productivity, of course, can be more difficult for service jobs due to variations in service requirements from job to job. Since, since hindi nga uniform yung inputs natin or hindi uniform yung uh, pwedeng makalabasan pag kayo ay nagkaroon ng transaction or interaction with customers, yung measurement of productivity mo ngayon iba rin. Like say for example, merong mga guests tayo makukuha na allergic into some foods or allergic into uh some some ingredient or whatsoever so yung uh, degree mo ngayon na gagawin is a little bit different compared to other uh productions that you did as a chef next quality assurance one of the uh, many challenging things then more challenging for service of course kasi nga it is an act no wala nga kasi specific set of instructions whereas compared with uh with goods ang production niya pare-parehas lang Kasi may specific set of instructions siya. So, mababa lang yung possibility niya um, or mababa lang yung possibility na mag-occur ng isang mistake. Next, uh, inventories. Many services tend to involve less use of inventory, of course, kasi nga service siya. Like say, for example, mga, de- Sorry. mga dentista or mga healthcare providers natin, hindi naman sila masyara nang stock up into inventories unlike restaurants, di ba? Ang... Um, more or less ang um ang kanilang ini stock up is more on uh, medicines, equipments ganyan, uh yung kanilang mga syringe or whatsoever, mga tissues, mga alcohols and many more uh, many more others. Wages, manufacturing jobs are often well paid and have uh, less wage variation. While in service it may depend on professional skills and degree of expertise. So pagdating sa service nga of course Sabi nga natin, it is a labor content of jobs or labor intensive yung trabaho ng service. It requires skill. And if the person that you will hire for that specific job is very skillful, um, nakita mo na maganda yung kanyang credentials sa resume niya, he or she only has the right to um, to uh, ask for more in the salary. Pero pagdating sa manufacturing jobs or sa goods, uh, hindi ganun kalaki yung range ng differences niya. Kasi uh, pare-parehas naman and level by level siya. Ability to patent, I think this is one of the least, uh, most important things. Product designs are often easier to patent than service designs, of course. Ano mga ba ang patent? Ang patent po is yung binibigay na karapatan dun sa isang bagay na na-invent na yung taong yun, siya lang ang pwede mag-monetize o siya lang ang pwedeng kumita doon sa ginawa niyang product na yun. Uh, so, ibig sabihin, kung may product na nag exist it is more on, uh, it, is, it is very easy to patent a good rather than service. Kasi service, um, it is an act, no? So, mahirap siyang i-measure if it is unique or not. So, yun. Yun yung parang uh, pinaka-difference niya. I like you guys to, uh, if, you, if you just want a quick overview of what we have discussed, eto siya. Ito ang kanyang uh, pinaka um, summary. And um, pwede ito yung pag-focus ng discussion natin o pwede ito rin yung pag-i-focus nyo para sa, mga, para sa aaralan ninyo pagdating ng ating exam. Uh, more or less, uh, lalabas ito. Remember though that most systems involve a blend of goods and service. Like say for example, tayo as restaurants nakalagay dito. Their system involves a combination of goods and service. They provide you food, which is tangible, and dining service, which is intangible. So the next time, no, uh, pag kayo ay pupunta sa isang restaurant, like say for example, huwag niyong mamaliite ng ating mga dining servers kasi those people are also skilled. They are also skilled in verbal communications, in, 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 in the whole operation of the restaurant. So, in the end, nakikita ninyo, guys, na ang restaurants or ang hospitality industry really is a mix of goods and service. So, it may, it can be considered as one of the 
paano ko ba sabihin? One of the hardest siguro, or not the hardest naman, no? It can be considered a hard labor. Kasi it is, it, it, it is labor intensive, pero you have to be skillful, no? You have to know what you are doing in order to execute a good job. Tapos, goods pa yung pinoproduce mo. So, it is a little bit, a mix in combination of two, and it's a little bit different to do. Um, now, ano naman ngayon, kung meron differences, merong similarities ang goods and service natin. Uh, Parating sa goods and service, um, of course, meron siyang similarities when it comes to forecasting, capacity planning to match supply and demand. Of course, parehas yan. Parehas nilang titignan ng sales nila para alam nila kung paano sila mag-operate. Process management, parehas din sila na nag involve ng isang process. Uh, managing variations, kasama yan sa mga susunod na modules natin. Or dito rin, pag-aaralan din natin as we go along the discussion. Monitoring and controlling cost, managing supply chain, location planning, inventory management, quality control, and scheduling. Those are the things that are similar to uh, production of goods and the production of service or delivery of service. <laughs> This means the job of operations management, which is overseeing the processes and systems of transforming resources into goods and service. So, essentially, parehas lang talaga ang role ng operation manager sa dalawa. So, walang difference kay operations manager masyado para pagdating sa goods and service. Ang goods and service ang may malaking difference between one another. Pero in the end, sa mata ni operations manager, halos iisa lang siya. Kasi pare-parehas ka lang nagpa-plano ng location, pare-parehas ka lang nagmamanage ng inventory mo, pare-parehas ka lang nag-quality assurance, pare-parehas ka lang schedule, pare-parehas mo tinitingnan ang buong proseso, ang supply, ang demand, ang market, and so on and so forth. So, malaki ang role ng operations manager. The next time that you will, uh, you will be working in specific companies, those specific companies will always have a chief um, operating officer or the union yeah, can, can be considered operations manager, chief operations officer, or um, chief executive officer, yun yung parang pinaka-boss. So, COO, chief of, operating officer, it's a little bit um, very, very big responsibility kasi it, it involves the whole operation, the whole design of the company, how each and every department works. So, tinitingnan niya yung company niya as a whole and tinitingnan din niya yung company as individual departments. So, malaki ang role talaga ng operations manager natin. And why you should do operations manager or operations, man, operations management? Of course, Sorry, nabubulol ako. Uh, as, you have, as you know, diba, may sipon nga ako. Uh, operations management nga, uh, it's, it involves the process of the whole, no? Learning, learning the operations of the whole company and learning the operations of each and every department to, to have this kind of balance that it works together, it blends smoothly to produce a specific output. And that is operations management. So, yun yung parang pinaka uh, gusto kong ipa, ibigay na discussion sa inyo um, for this specific module number two. Um, I won't really dwell in too much into this uh, part kasi it's pretty much um, ano ba, parang more on opinions na siya, more on, more on uh, feelings. Wala siya masyadong technical terms. So you can read this, you can read this. It is a good read, no? Para makita mo kung ano nga ba yung parang pinakasaklaw ng operations management, different kind of services na pwede ninyong tuunan ng pansin aside from operations, pwede kayong maging mga ganitong klasing uh, trabaho pag kayo ay graduate na. Now, we're going to proceed to the next module which is uh, understanding the process management and functions of the operations manager. So, pagdating dito, guys, it is also pretty much um, easy to understand. When it, dun, sa unang, dun sa nakaraang module, ito, yung module number two, the, the one that we just finished, ang focus talaga niya is more on the difference and similarities of the difference of the production of goods and delivery of service. And, sorry, 
and how in the eyes of the operations manager, it comes together as one or parehas lang siya. Now, we're going to um, delve into a little bit deeper so operations management and we're going to discuss processes. Process management and functions of the operations manager. So, let's begin. Nakaraan, ang pinag-usapan natin, di ba sabi ko sa inyo, babalik tayo sa, sa definition ng operations management na it is a, it, it is a process from step 1 to the last step and produces a final output. What we have discussed is the final output. And yung final output na yun, may difference siya. It, it is either a good or a service. Now, we're going to go back into that presentation and we will now discuss the step 1 to the last step or the whole process of the operation. So, papaano nga ba nagkakaroon ng operations management? Or papaano nga ba nag-ooperate ang isang company? We'll discuss it here in this module. So, first, let us discuss process. Process consists of one or more actions that transforms inputs into outputs. Tulad ng sabi natin kanina, di ba? This one or more actions, step one to the last step, to produce an output. Processes may differ from for manufacturing and service, but the underlying idea is all the same, big and small. A key aspect of operations management is process management. In essence, the central role of all management is process management. Ano nga ba yung process management natin? It is a discipline in operations management in which people use various methods to discover, model, analyze, measure, improve, optimize, and automate business processes. To in short, ano nga ba yung process management? It is something that companies do um, to better understand how to better work properly or to better understand how to operate much, much better compared to our operations now. Ano nga ba yung mga pwede nating gawin? Ano yung mga dapat nating gawin in order for us to improve our operations? And that is involved in process management. Kasi the process as it is, it is the whole concept of operations. Yun yung pinag-uusapan natin, yung buong process na yun. So, how does uh, processes work? Or ano nga ba yung three categories of business processes natin? Paano nga ba nag-work ang isang business? So, first, we will, we will have the upper management process wherein uh, sila yung mga big boss natin, yung ating mga managers, more on um, operation this, these govern the operation of the entire organization, so more on supervision, more on um, uh, delegating tasks, planning, uh, specifically strate strategic planning, um, decision making, dito lahat sa upper management process. And then operational process naman, sila naman yung from the term itself, uh, operational, these people or these um, part, the, these category, of the business process is more on execution. Yung paglabas ng output, pag, pag, pagkaroon ng isang solid na output. And then supporting processes naman, sila yung nagsusupport doon sa operational process natin or nagsusupport sa buong core or buong uh, kabuuan ng process na yun. So, process ako ng process, no? Sorry. Nakakaroon din man siya, pero, ano, um, think of it just like a... Um, step-by-step -step process, parang ganun. And ang ginagawa dito is um, each of the three categories here, they are the customer and supplier of each individual or each category. Ano yun, sir? Ano ulit? Uh, customer and supplier sila. Meron silang supplier and customer relationships na kalagay dito. Each categories have this. Why? How so? Operational processes, tingnan nyo yun, uh, uh, think of it like this. Um, pag si operational process, di ba, nag-produce siya, nag-execute siya ng isang process, nag, uh, nagbigay siya ng output, in-execute niya yung process from step 1 to, to the last step, meron na ngayong output. Kasi sila yung operational process eh. Ngayon, Yung buong process na yon from step 1 to the last step and doon sa pag-produce ng output, 
uh, hanggang sa pag-sell ng output natin sa mga iba't ibang customers natin, that is now the purpose of the supporting process. Nire-record nila yung um, yung mga nangyari step by step. Ano nga ba yung inventory, gano'ng karaming tao, scheduling, um, uh, gano'ng karaming tao ang kailangan para mag-execute ng ganito. Lahat ng kailangan uh, gawin ng um, operational process, ina-absorb ng supporting process. Dire-record nila. So, ibig sabihin, yung output ni operational process, binigay niya kay supporting process. So, in essence, parang nagkaroon ng si, si operational process, siya yung nag-supply ng data na kailangan ni supporting process. And si supporting process naman, siya ang tumanggap ng data na yon from operational process, making that process the customer. So, in essence, parang nagkaroon ng supplier and customer dito. Now, si supporting process, i- Um, i-de-develop yung data na yun, aayusin niya, i-present uh, niya ng maayos doon sa upper management process naman. So, in essence, ang nangyari, si supporting process nag-supply ng data, ng reports, ng sales, forecast, or um, cost nila whatsoever. Nag-supply siya ng data sa upper management process and si upper management process naman, siya ang nagtumanggap ng data na yun in order for them to see ano nga ba ang kailangan gawin para mas maging maayos ang ating operations. So, si upper management process, magpaplano siya. Strategic planning, um, forecasting, um, inventory, and so on and so forth. Magkakaroon siya ng deliberation, decision making, and once meron na silang decision on what to do, si upper management process, magsusupply siya ngayon ng set of instructions or magsusupply siya ngayon ng mga kailangan gawin ng operational process. And in essence, si operational process, tatanggapin niya yung decisions na ginawa ng upper management process making them have a supplier and customer relationship. And that is process management. Ganun po umiikot ang isang proseso or isang uh, operation in general sa isang company. Yun. Uh, yeah, ganyan siya in essence. Supplier, inputs from one or more. Transformation. So, ibig sabihin, let's say for example nga, di ba, yung data na kinuha ni uh, supporting kay operational, itatransform na yun into a report or a presentation para i-present doon sa upper management natin. And then, si upper management naman natin, Uh, gagamitin niya yung data na yon, ita-transform niya into a decision para i-bato kay operation natin. And so on and so forth. It is a repetition. It is a cycle of some sorts. So, yun. Um, it is also a very important part of operations management. So, please, um, pag-aralan ninyo ito mabuti kasi this might be part of the exam. Uh, next, two major aspects of process management. Um... In general, um, how the upper management decides or how how um, how to change directly yung buong process natin or, or operations, uh, it goes like this. Ito yung mga factors na consider ng operations manager uh, para alam niya kung ano yung mga kailangan baguhin doon sa process niya. So first, managing a process to meet demand. Uh, of course, etong diagram na to, Um, please take this into mind. This is a very important yan, diagram. Ang ibig sabihin niyan, um, ang ibig sabihin ng ito, ng part 1 natin, or managing a process to meet demand, is this in essence, yung diagram na to. So, tatandaan ninyo, um, ang supply natin will always come from operations and supply chains. Ang demand naman natin will always come from sales and marketing. Um, so, yun yung, ano natin, yun yung data. Kung baga, yung data ng supply will always come from the data of operation and supply chain, while the data of demand will always come from the sales and marketing team. So, ngayon, um, in essence, no, uh, when, if supply is greater than demand, ibig sabihin it is wasteful or costly. 
If mas marami ang iyong ibebenta pero konti lang ang gusto bumili, hindi ba sayang ang pau-produce? Sayang kasi um uh, ang dami mong ginastos para ma-produce diyon pero konti lang pala ang bibili. Next, when supply is less than demand. Ah, uh, pag less than demand siya, it is opportunity loss or customer dissatisfaction. Ibig sabihin Ang konti ng ginawa mong produkto, pero ang dami pala ng kustong bumili. Sayang ngayon. Sana nag-produce ka pa ng mas maraming supply, mas maraming product para na meet mo yung demand mo. And that is the ideal. If supply will all will be equal to the demand. Uh, ngayon, syempre, hindi naman siya palagi ganun kadali gawin, di ba? na maging equal ang supply at maging equal ang demand. Pero, ang ibig sabihin nito, ito ang isa sa mga target ng operations manager natin, na tama lang ang supply at tama lang din ang demand. Um, ito yung isa sa mga pinaka-iniisip ng mga, op- ng mga operations manager natin. Ano nga ba ang pwede natin gawin o ano ang gagawin natin para ang ipoproduce nating output or supply is tama lang doon sa demand ng market ngayon or demand ng product na binebenta natin. So, it it involves a whole lot of investigation. It involves a whole lot of research. Kailangan uh, titignan mo yung sales reports, yung uh, kailangan magaling ka mag-forecast ng inventory, mag-forecast ng sales, and so on and so forth. So, marami, ka lang, marami kang kailangan isipin as operations manager and this is one of the things that you have to think of. Um, you have to always think in business that your supply should always be equal to demand kasi yun yung ideal na, ideal na of course, ratio. Next, process variation. Variation occurs in all business processes. It can be due to variety or variability. Um, aside from um aside from making sure that supply will be equal to demand isa rin sa mga iniisip ng operations manager nila is the process variation of course it is um much 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 more better or mataas mas mataas ang chance ng isang company um uh, mag maging successful if they have a variation in their uh, products na binebenta nila and how will they have variation dun sa products na binibenta nila? It, kailangan siya, of course, ng process variation. Kailangan iba-iba rin yung process ng paggawa para magkaroon ng ibang product. So, there are four basic sources of variation. Vary, uh, the variety of goods or service being offered. Yun nga, yung unang-unang sinabi ko sa inyo. No? Um, should, should we have a good or should we have a service instead? Um, dapat ba tayo ay magbebenta ng isang manufactured na product or ating ginawa na product or mag- mag-offer tayo ng service instead? Ano yung kailangan nating business na gawin? That is one variation. Another one is the stru- uh, structural variation in demand. It includes trends and seasonal variations which are generally predictable. For example, Hotel would have better occupancy rate and rooms revenue during peak seasons as compared to lean seasons. So, structural variation in demand. Ibig sabihin, yung pagbabago-bago ng market natin or pagbabago ng klase ng demand na gusto ng mga tao. Like say, for example, ngayon, maulan, uh, malamig ang panahon. Ang demand ng tao or ang hanap ng mga tao ngayon is something hot something to warm up their ano their um their bodies yung katawan nila so they look for um coffee shops that offer hot beverages they look for um uh noodles and soups na pwedeng makapagpagaan ng kanilang balamig na <laughs> balamig na nararamdaman uh, like say for example biglang magi-crave sa sinigang biglang magi-crave sa uh, sa nilaga so Nakadepende sa seasons yung variation ng demand. Pero isa yon sa mga kailangang isipin din ng operations manager natin aside from thinking if good or service ba yung ipoproduce. Next. 
um, random variation, ayan, sorry, random variation pala ang sinabi ko sa inyo. Um, when it comes to when it comes to the decision making, um, pag hindi predictable yung nangyayari or natural occurrence siya, it is a random variation. Um, the structural variation in demand is predictable. Always remember that. Uh, fixed siya of some sorts. Like, say, for example, ayun nga, no, peak seasons, December, bur months, or yung mga wedding season naman, which is June, July, August. Um, summer season, which is uh, March, April, May, sometimes June kasama rin. A season is of love, January, February, and so on and so forth. Assignable variations, the last thing. These are caused by defective input, uh, incorrect work methods, out of adjustment equipment, and so on. These variations can be eliminated or reduced by analysis and corrective action. So, uh, sa isang operation, assignable variations is more on um, the actual operation itself. Pag meron mga uh, defective na kailangan na ayusin, of course, yung operation mo magugulo. Like say, for example, um, kayo yung nagtatrabaho sa Jollibee or McDonald's, uh, nasira ang fryers ninyo, yung mga deep fryer na mga french fries. Ngayon, mahihirapan kayo na mag-produce ng fries. So, sa operation nyo for that day, um, merong certain time na hindi available yung fries ninyo. And that is already a assignable variation. Defect, may defective kasi or may incorrect na work method kaya nagkaroon ngayon ng variation sa operation. Um, these variations can be disruptive to operations and supply chain processes. Of course, um, this could result in additional cost, delays, and shortages, poor quality, and inefficient work systems. So, ang, ang makikita mo ang galing ng, pro, ng operations manager base sa variations na ito. Kung papaano siya, kung gaano siya kagaling mag-adapt doon sa variations na nag-o-occur. Gaano siya kagaling mag-adapt ng operations pag, like say for example, restaurant, no? Gaano siya kagaling mag, um, mag-adapt doon sa um, variation na biglang lumamig yung panahon or sa variation na holiday season na or Lenten season, papaano nag adapt yung mga restaurant and so on and so forth. Doon, na, doon mo makikita kung gano'ng kagaling yung operations manager, kung paano siya kagaling mag-adapt sa mga pwedeng mangyari in the future sa kanyang business. Next, describe the operations function and the nature of the operations manager's job. I think, um, paano ba? Uh, sige, let us, let, let's have this one as the last um, last topic to discuss kasi medyo napahaba na ata ang aking discussion. So, let's proceed. Uh, describe the operations function and the nature of the operations manager's job. Ito yung kanina pang paulit-ulit, paulit-ulit-ulit kong sinasabi sa inyo. Um, ano nga ba yung pinaka-role ng operations manager natin? Base sa ng mga napag-aralan natin. Let's say, for example, di ba, na pag-aralan natin that um, there are two kinds of outputs available, goods or service. Meron siyang differences from one another, pero sa mata ng operations manager, meron siyang similarities or halos iisa lang siya. Bakit? Anong meron? Bakit parehas lang niya tingnan yung uh, goods or service? Next, dito naman sa... Uh, process natin. Nakita ninyo yung buong proseso ng pag uh, pagkaroon ng isang operation or how a specific process works from uh, from the three categories of business process, yung upper management, operational, and supporting. Kung paano sila nag-interact with each other. Um, kung paano sila nag-interact with each other. And how um how they work diba uh simultaneously or how they work uh harmoniously with one another or yung supplier customer relationship natin ngayon sa lahat na napag-usapan natin saan 
papasok si operations manager. Ano yung kailangan niyang gawin? Alam na natin ngayon na goods or service ang ipoproduce. Alam na natin ngayon kung ano ang papaano nagpaplano or papaano nagkakaroon ng proseso ang isang business. Ngayon, ang role ni operations manager dito is to design. Papaano siya magde-design? By decision making. Uh, operations manager, one of the things, one of the primary functions is to decide what to do for the business. That is primarily the work of operations manager. So, ibig sabihin kung siya ang nakalagay sa, de- sa decision making, saan siya ngayon nakapaloob doon sa three categories of business process natin. If you will become an operation manager, you will be most likely at the top, at the upper decision process natin, or upper level, or upper level management. And you have to decide, ano nga ba ngayon ang gagawin natin? Certain decisions affect design of the system, and others affect the operation of the system. And there is a difference as well in this. If you will decide what to do um, in your design, kung ikaw ay magde-decide kung anong kailangan kong gawin para sa aking system design, it is a strategic decision. It often involves long-term commitment of resources, like say for example, system capacity, geographic location of facilities, arrangement, product and service planning, um, and so on and so forth. Everything, strategic decision, or what we uh, what we call strategic management or strama, na pag-aaralan din ninyo sa second semester. Um, so, ito yung isa sa roles ng operations manager natin, to decide ano nga ba ang gagawin natin. Strategic decisions. It is, ang affected dito is yung system design. The design of the whole company. The design of the whole business. Now, pag si operations manager naman ay magde-decide sa operations or system operation, it is a tactical and operational decision. Often involves management of personnel, inventory, management and control, scheduling, project project management, and quality assurance. So, kung makikita ninyo, si operations manager, dalawa ang kanyang pwedeng maging role. Pwede siya ngayon mag-decide para sa disenyo ng isang company and yung mga decisions na gagawin niya para sa design ng company is strategic decisions. What shall we do in the future to enhance our sales? What shall we do in the future to have a better operational workflow? Ano yung mga kailangan nating gawin para ma-target natin ang ating mga goals or objectives? Yon ang role, isa sa mga role ng operations manager. Um, making a decision for the system design. Now, if the op- the operation manager can also work um, by giving decisions sa operations or sa system operation. It is tactical and operational decision. So, scheduling, sino ang mga mag-work on different time shifts. Um, uh, gaano kagaling si personal A, si personal B. So, sino ang pwede kong i-mix together para magkaroon ng isang magandang workflow. Inventory management control, scheduling, quality assurance, making sure everything na ginagawa ni operations is maganda or of quality or pasok sa ating SOP or standard operating procedures. So, yun po yung role ng operations manager natin. Purely decision making. And they will decide two things. They will decide on the system design or yung disenyo ng company. And yung mga decision na ginagawa nila dito are strategic for the development of the company. While they also make decisions for operation or what we call system operation. And often, yung decisions na ginagawa nila dito are tactical and operational decisions. So, ang um, magbe-benefit dito is yung operations natin or... Um, uh, Sino yung mga kailangan pumasok para ma-meet yung demand? Ano yung mga kailangan gawin? Um, quality assurance, making sure that the uh, output is off quality, and so on and so forth. 
So kung ito yung role ng operations manager natin, we can safely say that the operations manager is the key figure in the system. Siya yung isa sa mga pinaka-importanting parts ng pinaka-importanting part ng isang company. Kasi siya most likely ang nagde-decide sa lahat. Sa kanya nakasilalay kung mayiging maganda ang workflow. Sa kanya nakadesign kung mayiging maganda ang revenue. Sa kanya nakasilalay, sa kanya nakadepende kung um, gaano masasatisfy yung mga customers o yung mga guests natin. Ayan. So, ayan. everything else is... Um, Just added learning. So, pwede nyo nang basahin din ito. Um, operations managers, of course, should lurk, ah, uh, should lurk, should look at the bigger picture and also should look at the smaller pictures as well. Hindi lang sa bigger picture. So, yun. Um, I guess that's it. We can end the discussion right at, uh, right as of this moment. Medyo mahaba-haba na siya. So, uh, we, can, uh, we can stop with uh, this discussion thank you so much for um for listening i guess it has been almost an hour na ata ang aking discussion pasensya na ako na pahaba pero i hope na meron kayo natutunan kahit paano sa roles and importance ng operations manager natin so that's it i bid you farewell stay safe always and god bless everyone bye guys